Hello, hello everyone, it's Martin aka Anders, and today we're going to be jumping into something for the first time in what feels like a millennia. With Riot taking their break, as well as us being in this sort of in-between meadow where Killjoy is out but not allowed in tournaments and all of that nonsense, my usual content where we're looking at metagame statistics and things of that sort seemed kind of null and void where it was just going to be tossed out the window in a couple of days. Now that we're a little bit back to normalcy, I wanted to jump back into content with a topic that I'm personally really passionate about, but I think that a lot of people don't really have a ton of insight into. And that's the fact that I think that Asia as a region is the single most important place for coaches and analysts to be looking at while they create and adapt their strategies. Let's jump right in. For some context, what I mean when I say Asian Valorant is looking at the Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asian regions that have sort of started having significant competitions and that we've seen a couple of Ignition Series events out of. You've got regionally dominant teams already developing a bit of a rapport with squads like Thailand Attitude and Vision Strikers and Absolute Jupiter, uh, really just sort of steamrolling their respective regions with AHQ making a recent entrance and seemingly a new team added on a weekly basis. And so you may be asking yourself, cool, Asia has regional Valorant tournaments. Why should I care when NA and EU also have high caliber tournaments and seemingly have a lot more organizational buy-in at this point in time? Well, it's because of the fact that they don't have massive organizational buy-in and the fact that they aren't NA or EU that really makes them intriguing. Something that I think a lot of people look at and sort of throw Asia out the window when they see it is that the mechanical level of skill in Asia is notably worse than EU and NA. I might catch a little bit of flack for saying that out loud, but it's kind of just the reality. There are silly mistakes that show up in Asian Valorant on a near constant basis. Stuff like this. This, it has to be a straight up plant and they haven't got enough time. Round already over, just gonna be saving their extra weaponry. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> and this. That caliber shot would take off more than just one to be honest. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at Lying this! Him up. How is he this doing is it? it one after oh another? my god! One bo And this. That's not to meme on Asian Valorant by any means. That's just to point out the fact that there are game sense and micro-mechanical instances on a near constant basis in their region right now where they show just a lack of progress to the same level that NA and EU have been showcasing on a weekly basis. Now that we've set the stage a little bit, we understand that Asia isn't a region where we should be expecting the absolute pinnacle of mechanical Valorant. But that begs the question even more, why should we care? And the answer is, is that what they lack in mechanics, they make up for in strategy. Asia as a region was a little bit slow to bat when it came to sort of spurring forward their competitive Valorant ecosystem. Their tournaments are less frequently paced, they're not like NA or EU where we have something every single weekend, and they had a bit of a roller on when their first tournament was even happening. What you get out of that situation is a region that's now taking lessons from everyone else around them. Asia has taken EU and NA strategy and spun it their own way. Hyper aggressive, incredibly fast paced, and layering NA strategy on top of EU strategy, on top of NA adaptations to those strategies, atop EU adaptations to those strategies, and you end up with this melting pot and hub of strategic innovation in Valorant that isn't replicated anywhere else on the planet. It might not come with the craziest gun skill, but it does come with the craziest strategy, and that's what we should be looking at. Now comes the part where I put my money where my mouth is and show that I'm not just spewing nonsense. We're going to kick this off with a couple of instances of really kind of minor things, but things nonetheless that people should be paying attention to from Asian Valorant. These are going to be instances where it's just a single setup or a single ability or a combo of a couple of abilities that isn't seen very frequently, if at all, in other regions, and something that people could very easily be taking notes of if they were watching Asian Valorant. We're going to kick it off with 
what I was just sort of talking about with Asian Valorant's incredible aggression, where they layer two abilities to put forward a counter-offensive defense that in better circumstances would have immediately netted a double kill and if brought to a region like North America or EU would absolutely and unequivocally throw a wrench into what the other teams were expecting out of them. In case you aren't catching it right now, on B site, you have Omen lining up directly along the entryway to Garage and slinging a paranoia as soon as the round starts. Yeah, you saw that right. Jet tailwinded, caution to the wind, to the front of Garage, and if the two offensive players hadn't had the snap reflexes to break the LOS, that's a free double kill. As I mentioned earlier, this is Asia's norm. Hyperaggression is kind of their shtick. If you bring this to NA, you want to know how many teams are going to expect it? None of them. Next up, I have an example that is arguably even less impressive. It had less gravity on the outcome of the overall round in game and isn't something super crazy innovative. What it is, is inspirational. It gives an example of a creative ability usage in a way that we honestly don't see enough of in the rest of the world. Brutal. Savage. Wrecked. Absolutely taken down. <laughs> this is the kind of omen play I wish I could expect out of every other pro in the world, but the reality is, is there's like maybe five omens on a global basis that I could actually expect this out of reasonably. For those of you who didn't catch it, this omen has like maybe 20 or so seconds to start the defuse if he wants to take the round. He knows the last defender, Sage, is either in garden or in tree, and so he needs a way to cut her off. He moves to close the door between A site and tree, knowing that there's a fairly high chance that Sage just fast pushes him when he does it, and so what does he do? Presses the switch, tucks himself into the corner to break LOS, snap TPs behind generator, and then flicks the 180 to punish the Sage in the event that she fast pushes and tries to pre-fire that corner. Lo and behold, Sage did exactly that, and he gets the round for free off of an incredibly cerebral use of his abilities as an omen. Why don't we get more of this in other regions? And that's that's not to discredit the players who do. I mean, a player like Kriya in EU deserves all the credit in the world because he pulls this stuff out on the regular. But half of the teams in both NA and EU don't have this level of ability-based innovation. You don't have to watch a lot of Asian Valorant to see this stuff happen in almost every round. It is their norm. Next up, we have something that, again, isn't super crazy or flashy. It's just a cypher default. The one that's getting punished now from Team SMG, either by ultimates being used, by the operator that's more in play, or that aggressive flank coming all the way from Fal 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 pushing all the way towards the attacker's spawn. I think everything that seems to happen to Alan tends to be where the round goes, and Fal 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 almost sort of screwed up a, a prime position with that flank just because of the teleport play. He was so slow to rotate around, taking his time. But luckily, he fragged out and clutched it right in the end. More of a passive play when it comes to utility. Now though, just a Cypher default is still a pretty huge deal. I'm not going to say that this is something totally out of left field and mind-blowing. It is a camera placement that we've seen sometimes in other regions, trap wire placements that we've sometimes seen in other regions, and cyber cages that we've sometimes seen in other regions. Not groundbreaking by any means, but what it does show is it shows that there are creative defaults out there and utility placements that aren't the standard. We don't have that vertical hookah tripwire that seems to be the most common one in North American gameplay. We don't have coverage of B long that seems to be the norm in European gameplay. And this is the sort of utility default that I think Asian Valorant does a great job of showcasing. If you, as an analyst or a coach from another region, look at Asian Valorant and just write down all these defaults, say you get four, six, eight, ten of them, you can start taking things to a whole new level. 
Right now, utility defaults, at least as I interpret them, are mostly varied not out of a strategic impetus, but out of a desire to throw off your opponent's ability to pre-clear it. I'm not changing my trap wire position because it has any strategic significance to me. I'm changing my trap wire positioning so that it doesn't get shock darted by my opponent at the start of the round. At a certain point, when you have this bank that you've accumulated by watching other regions play, of that 4, 6, 8, 10 defaults, you can start asking yourself way more impactful questions. Where am I placing my camera? Am I placing it there because it's better for me this round, or because I'm afraid my opponents are going to shoot it? Is this camera better because I only have elbow support? What if I only have CT support? What if I have someone supporting me from hookah? Where does my camera make the most sense? Where do my trap wires make the most sense? When you have this bank of accumulated defaults, those sort of questions are easier to answer and allow you to strategically innovate at a much faster clip. This next one's a fun one because we get a two for one. We've got a Cypher one way and a default for utility, but then we also have a pretty aggressive crazy mid play that goes more back towards that Omen Jet play from the first example. There's that one way. Oh, and here's that mid play. We see an abnormally deep mid smoke coming out of the defensive omen and then a fast push out of both him and the defensive Sova. What that deep smoke allows is the Sova to push out and then skitter to that close right angle next to that generator and hold an angle onto B lobby's access towards mid. And at the same time, you have omen TP to the far side of mid and post up on the other generator. They set up this crossfire as soon as the round starts, and even though Sova goes down, Omen gets a two feed. And that brings us to the last one. The best of the best, the golden egg, the pièce de résistance. This is not the only phenomenal round from the last couple weeks of Asian Valorant, but the one I wanted to highlight the most, because it shows exactly what I was talking about at the beginning. A layering of strategy from regions all around the world, actively and dynamically adapted to. Starting us off, we have Omen TPing on top of shop and being boosted on a sage wall to peek towards dog. This looks awfully familiar from Europe just a couple of weeks ago. Decent success, but you touched on it a little bit later after the desk how both games went to overtime. So, um, We'll see if that ends up playing a factor, if Nip are able to really start to catch up uh, earlier on. That's a mighty fine Mixwell boost you've got going on there. But wait, there's more. Huh, would you look at that? Where have I seen a Sova Recon sidewalk default before? I hope it works out. Oh, right. Sinatra's been pulling that in an A for what? Four weeks now? And now we have breach aggression up through fish. Wonder where we've seen that. Five in the group stages on their attack. Will they get that early momentum and win the pistol? Oh, right. That's another play directly out of Sentinel's playbook and something that we saw out of Shazam two and a half weeks ago. So there you have it. A round that in roughly 30 seconds showed flashes of strategy from both NA and EU. And while really minor things and not full defaults or full executes, it starts to show what I'm getting at when I talk about coaches and analysts and high level players looking to Asia for hints at how strategy should be progressing in this game. You might say it's silly to call that a Mixwell boost or attributing that Sova default to Sinatra, and for the most part, I absolutely agree with you. There's definitely some random gold solo cure who thought of that Sage boost long before it was played by G2 in pro play, but that misses the point. The point is, is that 
if I was trying to play this game at the absolute highest level, I would be looking at, with an extremely fine lens, these melting pot regions that pit regional strategies against each other in unabashed form. Let me cue you in on something really interesting that I observed over the last three major tournaments in the Asian regions, one from Korea, one from Japan, and one from Southeast Asia. TSM's most played composition of Cypher, Jet, Phoenix, Omen, and Sova had a 9-2 and two record. Over the exact same period of time, in the exact same tournaments, EU's most played composition, the Dark Web, boasted a record of 8-12. and 12. I'm not saying North America is better, but the writing is on the wall that compositionally, playing Phoenix is slamming teams into the ground right now. If I was a European analyst, I would be taking notes of this. The fact that people aren't, and we aren't seeing compositional evolution in Europe, means that people aren't looking at this stuff or not taking it seriously. If you have teams that are of roughly equivalent skill, and Composition A is absolutely smashing Composition B, maybe you should stop playing Composition B, or at least take a deep dive into why that's happening, and it's just not being looked at in a serious enough sense. This is one of many examples of why I think, and why I made this video, all regions, coaches, analysts, and pros need to take a much, much harder look at Asian Valorant. And while I get a bit ranty and passionate about this, I ultimately don't think that this video portrays my concept super well. And the reason I'm okay putting out a video like it is because I think there's no video that will ever be able to portray this super well. The fact of the matter is, is that strategy is such a complex recipe that I could show you a million examples from Asian Valorant and I still wouldn't have conclusively proven that Asia is a strategic melting pot. What I'm ultimately getting at is that if you can see just a couple of examples of the breadth of sort of nuanced ability usage and strategy that they bring to the table, you can understand the value of what we can get out of analyzing them. In North America, you have sort of like a, a sheep effect where m most teams, I would say 80% of them, are just copying TSM's compositions. I mean, there's literally quantitative evidence of that. People are running TSM's comp. It's what they do. In Europe, you have the same sort of situation. You have everyone running the same composition and sort of trying to emulate another team's strategy. There's very few instances where that mold is broken. You have some instances in North America and you have teams like Team Liquid in EU where they're, they're definitely playing their own styles, but for the most part, everyone's just playing the same stuff. You then have to look outside. You have to look to places like Asia to see where those contrasting styles that like TSM comp uh, that has its associated play style versus that EU comp that has its associated play style, uh, where they clash and what that ultimate result is. And not only that, but you get to see those compositions in different forms. You'll have teams in Asia that take EU's composition, which plays really well into slow defaults and a passive uh, cerebral rotational play versus TSM's comp that thrives on over aggression and uh, sort of entry rotation in the form of the jet and you'll have them played in their inverse so what happens if you play that tsm composition in eu style and EU's composition in an a style and asia has that and yet nobody's analyzing it in a concrete way to understand the strengths and weaknesses of these regional metas i think that if we were to take a step back as an overall community and as analysts and professional players and coaches the lessons to be learned from Asia right now are the most important ones in all of Valorant strategy. I also wanted to take a moment real quick to thank everyone for sticking around. I actually got a ton of Twitter messages and YouTube comments saying, where the hell are you? When's the next video? Are you dead in a ditch somewhere? And I wanted to thank you guys for that. It's actually really meaningful for me that people give a shit about my content and the fact that I've been off the radar for a couple of weeks, uh, people were actually wondering when my next video was coming out. That feels super awesome and I appreciate the fact that you guys enjoy this content to the degree that you do. It makes the amount of effort that I put into them absolutely worth it. That all said, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. As always, if you're really enjoying my content, you can find me all across the interwebs. I like to live tweet a lot of Valorant competitions. You can find me at Anders TV there. 
You can also find me on Instagram and Twitch, also at Andrews TV. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.